And that is what college football is all about. It is a pleasure to have the ringleader of that incredible post-game celebration in the locker room, Syracuse head coach Dino Babers here, after their incredible win over Clemson. Coach, if you had any voice left, I hope you do, when you're joining us this morning, what has it been like since the win, just in the hours since? Well, I'll tell you what, it's, I have a little bit of voice left. I appreciate it. Thank you so much for inviting me on. It, it's, been, it's been unbelievable. I've got about uh, four hours of sleep. I had to go back home and rewatch the game. And, and uh, now I'm on my way to the airport to go recruiting. But so happy for the young men, so happy for the program, so happy for the community. No question. I've got to ask you about your quarterback, Eric Dungy who is going to go down in Syracuse lore there with McPherson, with McNabb, all the greats, because you got one performance like this, they'll remember you forever. Tell me about Eric's play last night. Well, I'll tell you what, Eric was dynamic. I, I told him a story before the game started. I told him a story of a, of a Trojan slayer. and uh, <laughs> We had a similar situation happen at UCLA when we beat USC when they were second in the nation, and our quarterback was uh, Cowan. And I told him, I said, Cowan, he won that one game, and, they, and his nickname was the Trojan Slayer. No matter what he does, everyone was talking about the time he quartered back the friggin' Bruins, and they, and they beat the Trojan. I told him that story, and I said, you need to put one of those stories in your novel before you leave here. And Lord and behold, boom, he goes out and does it. They'll never forget his name. He did a fabulous job. Yeah, I think he's got a story to tell for the ages. How did this game change on the other side while we're on the quarterback tip, Coach? How did this game change when Kelly Bryant left with that concussion? You know, uh, I really felt that I was a little worried about it because we really had a good grasp on what he was able to do with that ankle, that he really couldn't run the way he wanted to run. So it kind of made him one and a half dimensional. So we thought we had a great feel for him. When they brought the backup in, I was like, oh, my God. Because now maybe that opens up their running game, maybe it gives them a part of the dimension of their offense they weren't able to use. So I was really hoping that he would stay in the game, but it worked out okay for us. No question about it. This is a program-defining win. However, this is not the first incredible celebration that Coach Babers has led in the Syracuse locker room. For the Orange fans out there, they'll remember the first win to coach, put Coach on the map in his first year on the job last year, a win over another ACC stalwart, Virginia Tech. Let's take a listen to that post-game celebration last year. That happened almost a year to the day. So it stands to reason next year, Coach, when you knock off like Miami or Louisville, we'll have you back on when you knock off your next ACC stalwart. Uh, you tell me, which celebration was better, Vatek or the one you led last night? You know, I have so much respect for Dabo Sweeney and the Clemson Tigers, and I still believe that they're going to be a team that's going to be playing for a national championship. I still believe that they're going to be in the Final Four. But that first celebration with the young men who – who had just had to have faith, belief without evidence that we could get it done versus Virginia Tech. Uh, you know, I'll never forget that. And and the celebration, it went national. My daughters had to tell me I was trending. I'm like, what is trending? Is that good or is that bad? And uh, and after all that, uh, Rick Neuheisel will talk so bad about our locker rooms nationally that we got a new set of locker rooms. So if you really check the the lock, the celebrations look totally different. Like it's two different rooms, but we got a brand new locker room from the first celebration because everybody thought it was so so outdated that we needed to have a new one. So I think Rick Neuheisel and I think it's the playbook for getting me a new locker room. I really appreciate it. The residual benefits with a sense of humor, great, great stuff. That's what makes college football amazing. You mentioned Dabo and the amount of respect that you have for Dabo Sweeney. Um, and I think if fans aren't aware of this, this is going to give them the respect that they need. After the game, he stopped by your locker room after you maybe upended their chances to repeat as national champions. I wonder if you could tell us what he said to your team when he visited your locker room. Well, here's the thing. I was actually at my press conference when he did that. So when I got back, every, you know, the players were telling me that he came in. And it, and it does not surprise me. He's, 
he's a first class act, and I guarantee you, if you know, if someone said, "Hey, Dabo wants to talk to the team," you know, what do you want what us to do? I said, if, if Dabo Sweeney wants to talk to my football team, you need to let him talk. You know, <laughs> that's how much respect I have for that man. Now, I know you obviously said you were in the press conference, but your players were there, and I'm guessing you had an opportunity to speak with them after the win on a couple of different things. Uh, have you communicated with them on what they thought it was like when the defending national champion walked in to say, good job, boys? They, uh, I have not had a chance to speak with them because when I got back, they were all so broken out. I think they were all heading to the library. But uh, I, the big thing is I've seen some of their tweets, and they're and really, really respectful. They were really... Um, excited and proud that he came in and delivered that speech based off the effort of how they put on the football. There's no question about it. This is an amazing win. Last year it was a 54 nothing Clemson victory. It just goes to show you what heart, belief, and some pretty darn good coaching can do. Syracuse has a win. It's the 30th anniversary of maybe one of the greatest seasons they've ever had, that Seminole 87 season in 2017. Ain't turning out to be too bad either. Coach, congratulations. Keep celebrating, and you are trending in a positive way on Twitter. That I can guarantee you. Congrats. Thank you so much. Have a great day.